give the chairperson budget the the mic thank you very much uh, madam speaker madam speaker i wish to move that the division of revenue amendment bill that is national assembly bill number 38 of 2024 be now read a second time honorable speaker i wish to take just a uh, a, a brief moment to brief members that as we are all aware we had made a budget that was to be implemented in the year 2024-2025 the budget is two-sided the revenue side and the expenditure side when we came before this house honorable speaker we were able to dis uh, 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 to debate and actually pass the expenditure side of the budget and also pass the appropriations bill which became an act. Consequently, Honorable Speaker, afterwards, as we know the revenue side had challenges and the revenue raising measures that were there, Honorable Speaker, were not able to be realized because of the challenges that we all now understand and know. And in that respect then, the government had to, and us here in Parliament, had to come up with measures to have a budget that balances the expenditure and the revenue side of the budget. And Honorable Speaker, therefore, this has necessitated cuts across all government agencies, Honorable Speaker, and also across the two levels of government so that we are able to balance the anticipated expenditure together with the expected revenue, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, on the national government side, we have come before this House and already have done the appropriations, uh, the, 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 the supplementary budget, which was signed yesterday by the President. It is now an act. Honorable Speaker, what we were seeking to do is to balance the budget through two ways. One, borrowing a little more, which we borrowed 176 billion more than we wanted to borrow as a country, but we have also consequently added up cutting around 145 billion of anticipated expenditure, especially that amount is only in the national government, which incorporates the judiciary and parliament. Honorable Speaker, then, because of the situation we find ourselves as a country, we have had to do something unprecedented. And actually, all that we have done is unprecedented. In the budget-making process in Kenya, there is no budget that was amended through a supplementary budget barely a month after the signing of the Appropriations Bill. This is the first time. The other unprecedented thing, Honorable Speaker, is that it is the first time again that we are actually amending the equitable, uh, the Division of Revenue Bill, Honorable Speaker, which is actually, um, which actually divides money uh, uh, vertically uh, between the national and the county governments. Honorable Speaker, in a nutshell, is that this House had already passed the equitable share to our counties to, an, to a figure that has never been there before of 400.1 billion shillings. Upon revision of the expenditure side necessitated by the collapse of the revenue raising measures, the amendment before us, Honorable Speaker, is then to also have a haircut in the equitable share from the proposed 400.1 billion to 380 billion, Honorable Speaker, so that all the efforts of government apportion the loss of, uh, the loss of anticipated revenue across the board, Honorable Speaker, and therefore the nutshell of this amendment of the Division of Revenue is actually to decrease the amount from 400.1 billion to 380 billion in line with the realities we find ourselves as a country. Honorable Speaker, from the two levels of government, which is national government and the county government, even within the national government, everyone has had to take a haircut. And some 
have actually had their head stopped, Honorable Speaker, because of the drastic cuts that we had to then effect. Across the arms of government, the executive is losing money, parliament is losing 3.7 billion Kenya shillings, judiciary is losing around 2 billion Kenya shillings. Everyone, every arm of government, Honorable Speaker, and all levels of government has had to come in and uh, uh, go through the austerity measures, Honorable Speaker, the ones we are affecting today, and especially in the counties through the division of revenue. Honorable Speaker, I also want to brief this House that the Constitution permits a flow of 15% when it comes to dividing the revenues through the equitable share. Honorable Speaker, constitutionally, we are already past that amount in the current uh, proposal because at 380 billion shillings, we are already at 24.4%, and therefore it is way beyond the constitutional requirement. Honorable Speaker, something else we have had to do is that in our report, we have recommended, even in the bill, Honorable Speaker, something else that we have not done in this House before. And our proposal as the Budget Committee is this. In anticipation in future what you've been seeing, Honorable Speaker, if you look at the current supplementary appropriations bill, which is basically the main budget, we have a to budget for 68 billion shillings of carryovers. Carryovers meaning we have cherry-picked a few items which even if the year has elapsed, those budget lines cannot lapse. They total to 68 billion. However, the entire amount of carryovers, money is that we are not funded by the, by, by, by the Treasury, by close of last financial year, was 221 billion Kenya shillings. It therefore means our revenue raising measures as of last year, through debt and revenue, ordinary and a in A was short of 220 billion Kenya shillings, Honorable Speaker. Now, this is the debate I invite this House, Honorable Speaker. In light of that, we have had to budget 13 billion Kenya shillings to CDF, carryovers. We have had to budget for over 30 billion Kenya shillings to our counties as carryovers. We have had to budget for 23 billion shillings, Honorable Speaker, 21 to 23 billion, as carryovers for pensions. What am I trying to say, Honorable Speaker? The way the government should work is that by the fall of 30th June, Kenya operating under what we call T plus two. After two days, there should be no disbursement from the National Treasury for the previous year's budget. Basically, that's what it means. But then, because some of these things, like CDF, we have already gone for public participation, this money is, I mean, you have gone through the wrong hole, there is no way then we could have, or uh, um, CDF could have been denied this amount. Money is for pensions. Whether the year lapses or not is not a problem of the pensioner. They had to be paid. County governments alike. They have already done their budgets approved by the county government. They need the money. So we have 68 billion we are funding now, money for last financial year. And as we know, because governments are run through time, it is not, government is not in the business of wealth. Government is always in the business of cash flow and revenue. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, since you cannot run government through receivables, you cannot run government through assets, you only run through money that is coming in and out. We have done one thing. In anticipation, we have a near where the revenue raising measures do not measure up. Honorable Speaker, what do we do as a country? We anticipate to raise 2.6 trillion Kenya shillings in ordinary revenue this year. What happens when we go to 30th of June next year? and we have only raised two trillion, what would happen? That's the debate I'm inviting this house. 
what would happen just to repeat if by that if we anticipate to raise 2.6 trillion what would happen by that year june that kra has only raised 2 trillion what would happen honorable speaker we have suggested in our report and in this bill when there is a shortfall in revenue raising the two levels of government must carry that burden proportionately. Because then what happens, even county governments themselves, Honorable Speaker, they also usually project their revenue. But many times, they have a shortfall. Then, is it a new thing? No. In government of Kenya, ever since for the last many years, we have had shortfalls in revenue. In this year, I'm repeating, we have a shortfall of 200 billion. The national government is carrying this burden alone. A national government, I mean executive, judiciary, and parliament. Honorable Speaker, we just have to buy the bullet. And I'm anticipating a period where we have a drastic fall in anticipated revenue. Then we make the national government carry the burden. They may actually end up even not being able to pay salaries. Why? Our development expenditure is of this budget that we passed the other day is 640 billion. What if we had a shortfall of 640 billion as a country? Then it means we are obligated to fund all the other levels of government, but the national government will have a deficit in funding even PE, personal emoluments. That is what we must think of as a house when there is a shortfall the two levels of government, at the same percentage, they carry the same burden. But when there is a surplus, if there is a surplus, that could also be incorporated, that also they be considered. Though we have not had a surplus in many years, Honorable Speaker. So that is the main highlight in this, uh, in this proposal, Honorable Speaker. I know there are provisions of the Constitution. We have had to sit down with our legal experts, but we have decided this debate must start because if it doesn't start on our speaker, then we are living a lie as a country. With those many remarks on our speaker, I also want to uh, buttress the point that we have also allocated over 40 billion Kenya shillings in conditional grants to our counties. We have done everything in support of devolution. As the budget committee, we have beyond these uh, resources. As I've said before, we have also ap uh, appropriated 44 billion in um, uh, conditional grants. Honorable Speaker, we have also appropriated 8 billion shillings, managed for equalization fund, which is majorly supported and managed by our governors. They are doing a fantastic job. This does not want to show that there is anything against anyone. It is basically where we are as a country. That parliament for the first time, I saw something I have never seen. Members of parliament rising and saying, cut our CDF, which we cut by 10 billion shillings, honorable speaker. Members of parliament standing and saying, for the sake of our country, cut our travel budget, cut any other non-co expenditure, which we ended up cutting 3.7 billion shillings. We are just requesting the same now percolates across all levels of government so that we live within our means as Kenyans very unequivocally and directly and eloquently suggested that we must do. With those many remarks, Honorable uh, Speaker, I wish to request the very able Vice Chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. I beg to, uh, with those many remarks, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move and request the very able uh, Vice Chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, the elegant Mary Yamase, to second this motion. Very well, Mary Yamase. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to second the report on the consideration of the Division of Revenue be Amendment Bill 2024. Honorable Speaker, I will be very brief, and I just want to make it very simple. 
Honorable Speaker, we suffered a shortfall in revenue, in a projected revenue. And this was occasioned by the failure to enact the finance bill 2024-2025. As a result, this necessitated the rearrangement and rationalization of the estimates. And that we've already done through the supplementary estimates one of 2024-25. Honorable Speaker, the purpose of this bill, the purpose and object of this bill, is to amend the Division of Revenue Act 2024 to provide for the equitable sharing of revenue between the national and county government, taking into account that shortfall, taking into account the downward revision of the projected revenues, which we just witnessed as a result of the collapse of the finance bill. We had initially projected a projected revenue of 29.48 billion. But now that has been revised downwards to 2602.1 billion. That brings us to a downward revision by 346 billion, which the chair has explained that it has to be borne by both county and the national government. And that therefore means that the county government shareable re revenue has come down by 20 billion. And the national government will come down by 325 billion. So basically what we are saying, the amendment in the bill, subclause 51A, actually is seeking to protect county governments, such that at any one time, if we have a shortfall, it is limiting the amount which the county governments, or that shall be borne by the county governments, not to exceed 15% of the shortfall. So, in other words, the amendment is seeking to protect the county governments and limit the amount to which they shall bear to not to exceed 15% of that shortfall. So, Honorable Speaker, this is a very straightforward bill, like I've said, and whenever we have a shortfall, Kenyans have told us we have to live within our means, then we have to, to share whatever challenges that accrue from uh, uh, some of the actions or uh, the choices that we make as a country, because we've been told choices have consequences. So, Honorable Speaker, as I conclude, I want to appeal to the county governments. They will be receiving 380 billion. I know it has come down from what we had initially projected. But I want to appeal to county governments to prioritize their needs to look into the issue of the pending bills and make sure those contractors, those who are given tenders even by their predecessors, services who are rendered and offered, be given first priority and be paid their monies. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I second. Uh, very well. Honorable members, I propose the question that the Division of Revenue Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 38 of 2024, be now read a second time. No, there's serious interest on this one. And uh, the first to have a bite is the Honorable Christopher Aseka, Huisero. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I also rise to join my chair and vice chair in supporting the Division of Revenue Amendment Bill 2024, uh, which allocates revenues between the two levels of government, that's the national government and the county government. Uh, Honorable, uh, Honorable Speaker, <clears throat> national government in this bill will receive about 2.2 trillion. The county governments are going to be allocated 380 billion, and also 7.8 billion are going to equalization fund. Mr. Honorable Speaker, this is within the constitutional uh, provisions whereby the 380 billion being taken to government is within the 
over 15 percent. Uh, it is 24.2 percent of the national revenues. Mr. Speaker, as we do this, we, we are coming out from a situation uh, which was uh, a withdrawal of a finance bill that led to the shortfall of the revenues by about 365 billion. This one now means that every arm of government is going to bear the loss and the county government loses about 20 billion from 400 billion, making it 380 billion. As we do this, Mr. Speaker, we need also to call upon government, county governments to ensure that they improve on their own source revenue mechanisms to ensure that they generate as more revenues as possible at the county levels. But as, as we say this, Mr. Speaker, we also need to ensure that these monies that are, being to, that are going to county governments and national governments are put into good use. For example, Mr. Speaker, as per the schedule for the Constitution, there are clear roles that the, government, the county governments are supposed to play. One of the roles is to provide water, health care, to support agriculture and infrastructure. But Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, and a case in point like in Huisero constituents where I represent, we have water projects that have stalled for even four plus years. The Misango water projects that is under the county government has been uh, an ISO in the eyes of the residents of our constituency. I want to call upon the county government of Kakamega to prioritize the implementation of this project to ensure that Kenyans within that region in Huisero access safe and clean water. Mr. Speaker, also we have the issue of healthcare, and we have issues with our hospitals, the dispensaries, uh, health centers, where our people are really suffering because of lack of enough drugs in those facilities. We call upon the county governments to prioritize supply of drugs in our hospitals and employment of nurses and doctors to ensure that our people are well treated. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, as I finish, I call upon even the national government also to ensure that these funds as we do unlock this bill, are released to respective government departments and agencies to ensure that the implementations of projects that are marked in this budget are done in time, and also to ensure that all the pending bills within the sectors are paid to avoid the challenges that small and big suppliers and contractors are facing in the country. Mr. Speaker, I support. The Honorable Murugaru Gitonga. I'm not sure you want to speak on this. Yes, Proceed. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg to support the bill in that we must live to reality now. We are living in very difficult uh, times and we have to think prudently about what exactly we are going to do so that the governments run. We had the bill which had for the county governments 400 billion. Regrettably, the bill fell through. This means in essence that the three arms of the government and the county governments have to actually tighten their belts because expectedly we have to cut on allocations. And this is why we would implore on the county governments to bear with the 20 billion cut which they have to suffer. The same as applied to the executive, to this house, honorably, and also to the judiciary. By these cuts, it does mean that county governments would not be able to provide the essential services or pay the recurrent expenses. This 20 billion possibly would have gone into pay rises which must now be frozen. It must also ensure that travels which are not necessary, whether for seminars, whether for benchmarking or whatever it is county governments have to do, have to be cut. Expenses on vehicles, expenses on a personnel, all this must go down. We know very well that our county governments most times are extravagant. In fact, there is a you and a cry out there that while work done by CDF is visible, not much can be talked about to the county governments. It's the high time the county governments live to their expectations that the citizens over there have to get the services that they deserve. We know very well that there has been an employment embargo put in place that government will not employ 
and county governments also have to adhere to this. But that notwithstanding, then we have the natural attrition, which we must uh, always feel in so that there is no vacuum. We have had the surpluses, if at all realized. If those are to be shared equally, then the burdens which arise from this must also be shared equally, and county governments must live with the cuts. Therefore, this, uh, this amendment to the supplementary uh, act, uh, sorry, this amendment to the appropriations act is timely and in line with what we have done in the supplementary uh, appropriations bill, which is now an act of parliament, which we are relying on for the time being and until another one is actually put in place. Of course, people are asking, what happens now that we lost the 2024 supplementary, sorry, the 2024 Finance Act, and we have also recently lost the 2023 Finance Act. The position in law is that the Supplementary Appropriations Act, which is now in force, becomes the operative law. And we will have to live with that until another one is put in place. With those remarks, I beg to support. Uh, the Honorable Robert Basil. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the floor. I raise to support the Division of Revenue Bill for on a number of reasons. It's good to live within our means, Mr. Speaker, and that was because the Finance Bill 2024, the Gen C's and many Kenyans say the money or the taxations were too much for them to bear. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the 380 billion for county government, Mr. Speaker, that money is going to support all the services that have already collapsed. Mr. Speaker, the money will go rightly to pay salaries as well as spending bills, Mr. Speaker. It's important, Mr. Speaker, to say that the money must be used prudently. We have seen a lot of wastage in the county governments, particularly when it comes to usage of this money, Mr. Speaker. So we want that funds to be used wisely so that citizens can see the value of their taxes, Mr. Speaker. Importantly, Mr. Speaker, the equalization fund, 7.8 billion, Mr. Speaker, should be distributed equitably based on the baseline data, Mr. Speaker. Some areas have been marginalized since 1963, Mr. Speaker, and it is important that constituencies that are going to be selected to benefit from the equalization fund should be selected based on data that is available de depicting or exhibiting disparities that has existed over the years, Mr. Speaker. When I look at the 2.5 trillion for national government, Mr. Speaker, this is money that is going to go to support national government functions, Mr. Speaker. And I do say that it's important to promote accountability and transparency when these resources are going to be spent or implemented to support national government functions, Mr. Speaker. I think it's also important to underscore the importance of uh, equitable distribution of resources and national government to respective constituencies, Mr. Speaker, so that at least across the country, we can have uniform development, Mr. Speaker. Because if you look at our country, we have a very outstanding or resounding disparities of different, I mean, of different areas across the country simply because resources are not promptly utilized to support services or to support functions, both at national and account level, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I do support uh, the report or the bill, the Division of Revenue Bill, and request that the respective points are put across be respected when these resources are being utilized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I submit. Very well, the Honorable Julius Ruto, says. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for accommodating me to contribute in support of the Division of Revenue Amendment Bill of 2024. Mr. Speaker, as uh, colleagues, members of Parliament have said, and as we are aware of the unprecedented events that preceded the closure of last financial year, where the Finance Bill 2024 was rejected, all of us have found ourselves in this situation. It is a unique situation that has never ever happened before, and probably we are writing a new story in the Parliament of Kenya, where a, a situation like this has taken us to such discussion that probably it wasn't there before uh, had been predicted that would happen. We are aware of the provisions of the Division of Revenue Act, Section 2, where there is a shortfall on revenue collection, the national government bears the loss. And when there is uh, a success in exit of revenue collection, the national government does the same. But for this particular purpose, Mr. Speaker, we have been taken to this situation. And it's not a unique situation that is only caused by national government activity. But rather, it, has, it is a process that was stopped by situation that arose by rejection of finance bill. It is the right time that we must speak to ourselves. What do we do at such a, a scenario and occasion? Mr. Speaker, the reduction of what had been earlier provided for under division of revenue and under sharing of equitable uh, resources as per the constitution of the Republic of Kenya from 410 to 380 is something that has to be accepted by all quarters. And I want to pray that the, that the other side of this parliament have also to find a reason to support the same. Why? Because as much as we would wish to take our hard position, the reality is that we don't have resources. That as we speak, Mr. Speaker, the development money for national government has been reduced to the tune of almost 150 billion. It means programs worth 150 billion will not be executed. Leave alone even the intended programs to be executed. We are worried of the bending bills, programs that are ongoing and resources have not been provided for. And therefore, it is high time now we need to discuss around Division of Revenue Act and amendments that is required. So that when such a scenario we are found in, we are able equitably be able to share the burden. So that as we seek to adjust from the national government point of view, from parliament, from executive, from judiciary, every quarter has been affected. So the devolved government units again should sit and be able to relook at their allocations on the other side. But nonetheless to say this, Mr. Speaker, it is high time also we need to speak to our own source revenue from the county governments. Because I know they have been going through challenges in meeting their targets. It is high time now that this particular scenario speaks to them so that their intended development agenda and programs to spur and grow devolution now will be supported effectively by the resources that is endowed within them. Because most of the county governments have never ever managed to meet their targets. And if you look at the reasons behind it, is poor plans, poor uh, policy in place, poor revenue collection measures, or even misuse of the same, enforcement of the same. Mr. Speaker, this particular scenario helps us now to speak to the Council of Governors, to speak to the devolved government units, so that they begin to relook at the laws governing their own source revenue. Because if they're able to maximize their collection, the same way now we are pushing ourselves to the, to the last elastic limit, on the other side, if they're able to push further, they will reduce the, that direct dependency on the core functions that they have to discharge for the same to be able to meet the mandate of the wealthy governments. Another issue, Mr. Speaker, that I want to put across is this. That even as we seek to put ourselves into a scenario of push and pull, it is high time also as Kenyans now we begin to look at the scenario and the situation we have been put in place. Probably other issues or other discussion need to come around what are we going to do? Hands forward. Because, Mr. Speaker, you are aware. There is a case in court now, a ruling by the Court of Appeal invalidating the Finance Act of 2023. We are aware the Finance Act of 2023 was seeking to raise additional revenue of not less than 200 billion. I know appeal has been made to the Supreme Court, but who knows the outcome of that? I don't want to, 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 to preempt the outcome of the ruling of the Supreme Court, but should it uphold what the Court of Appeal has said? Already we are going into problems. And I think it is high time now as Kenyans, we need to ask ourselves the situation where we are in. Where are we going to go? Already, if 
rulings of the, of the court comes in affecting the already affected, the basket that we have. Now it's going to affect it further. Now we are discussing on division of revenue. I don't know whether we are aware supplementary two should be coming very soon. And this supplementary two should be coming. Who is going to survive in this? Will devolution survive? Will the national government survive? So, Mr. Speaker, I want to call on all every other agencies that we want now to tread carefully, lest we collapse the country. Because with the advent challenges that is going to affect on existing framework of re revenue raising, then we are going to collapse critical services that Kenyans are requiring. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I want to support this particular amendment and to request that and for now we need to have a discussion on how to absorb the reduction of the revenues because we cannot survive on these ones. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Beatrice Elachi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also rise to support the report and to appreciate uh, so far uh, our budget committee and chair for the work they have done. I know it's been a very, very tough uh, year where we've had to repeat and to ensure that we just get into the timelines and the lines and uh, the inspirations of what Kenyans want. And to appreciate that, yes, every sector will have to bear the burden, but more importantly, maybe it's going to teach us also a lesson on how to look at our budgets without uh, really uh, putting so much. And let's see how we perform with this. And it will give us now a way forward on what the president has always said, that he would wish that there will be a time when we have a budget that is itemized. And this will help us. But I know it is up to us in whatever little we have. And that is what we should be asking, Mr. Speaker. That is there a way we can have prudence in how we are going to dispense the resources that we are given based on what we have. The other thing we should be asking ourselves as Kenyans is that how good is it that we can go back and reflect and ensure that slowly by slowly we come out of IMF and all these things that have brought us to where we are today. But I also want to ask Kenyans that as much as we are doing that, we also need to understand that you will not expect a lot. And so you cannot come again and start blaming. But the little we have, and that is why it is important, if it is one project, let Kenyans see that one project. Let it come out, Mr. Speaker, as yes, we had this little, but we have one project, and the project is seen, the project is with quality, and can be quantified that it has spent public resources in prudence. The other thing, Mr. Speaker, as you look at the reports, we go now to the county governments. And I think even as we readjust everything, it is time we must also ask the county governments to now come openly, transparently, on how much do they collect from their local revenue. Is it able to now become a fund or resources that can be assisted to support where we've had the deficit. Because that is one thing, it's like in Kenya, it doesn't matter. Yes, we have local revenue, nobody cares about it, nobody even says how much is it, and then in the end, you don't even, and, but we are here saying we have reduced 20 billion. You want to tell me in the local revenues of each county, my, Mr. Speaker, even if they collect 1 billion, these are 47 counties, you'll find across 47 billion shillings. It will even surpass. And so those who are able to collect even more, Nairobi can collect even more, Mr. Speaker. You will find even Nairobi, if well organized, we can have beyond of 40 billion shillings. Mr. Speaker, we can even become the first county that can even share their revenue in terms of giving loans to other counties. So it is the systems of how we collect revenue. And this thing of saying we have deficits at the national level, Mr. Speaker, it has to now start balancing with that, that we must also know how are the counties performing? Is there a way the Senate can bring in incentives that if you perform better, and if you collect, collect better, then there is a parameter that you can be added more revenue because you are collecting 
and spending well in terms of the development that you are giving your people. Mr. Speaker, the other thing we should be asking ourselves, and this should be within education. You realize, Mr. Speaker, we are about to now, in the year 2025, we shall be facing out the 844 system. And so we are moving slowly by slowly. But we should also be now trailing ourselves that we must think that CBC must get it right from the word go in terms of having education, free education as they move. And it can happen, it can work, and we must come out of this cry so that we start now reorganizing our resources ourselves. Mr. Speaker, the other thing we should be telling now uh, our citizens, you remember the courts also now quashed the 2022-2023 finance bill. So we've gone back to the acts. It's not that we are hanging, no. But there were good things that were meant for manufacturers. Now it is gone again. And so we have to sit down also with the judiciary. While Gen C's are telling us to sit down, Mr. Speaker, isn't it fair to sit down also with the judiciary? <laughs> have a meeting together, not just a meeting, Mr. Speaker. We go for a workshop together. Now to start looking at all these things that are coming all over. Because we cannot be having the Gen C's saying we need to see good governance in each arm of government. It means also the judiciary must be now part of that good governance. And you must look at the public also, and the interest of the public. You have left the country. We are just sorting out 2023, 2024, 2025. We, you have taken us now out completely. And so we are saying all the gains we had put even in the other bill, as much as it had a lot of cry, there were issues of excise duty. There were issues of manufacturing. Were, and now we are back to ground zero. And these are some of the things we must sit down. We don't need to complain. We don't need to talk about it on media. But we need to sit as two arms of government and get a better way. Yes, nobody can control the judges in terms of their judgments. But when the country is at a very vulnerable state like this, if we have any arm that is trying to bring us into a situation where you find our country going to the brinks, it will be very unfortunate, very unfortunate. So in the time when things are at the state we are in, we need every person, every arm of government to feel that indeed we are working towards making Kenya better, but also towards appreciating the challenges that we have and making things to work, but not the way we have done. Because even the formula we had for university students, the moment you quash all these things, you should be asking yourselves, where have we taken back help? Where have we done this? It is going to affect. So we are pleading with the judiciary. Look at everything as we move. As we move, just know in the education system, there are new systems coming in place. Let us not find ourselves again in the crisis we have been. So Mr. Speaker, even as I support I know that the Senate will have to look at this, at what they had uh, passed in Dora, and realize that we have to realign, and the counties must realign, and the governors must re realign, so that we move in. I'm hoping nobody again will run to court, because it is a system, I don't know where, why we are doing all this, but I'm hoping not anyone in the Senate will rush to court, or anyone in the counties, but we shall work within the means we have accepted and we see our country moving in this financial year of 2024-2025 and ensure we put in governance of systems. And I'm hoping the new CS will be able also to look at all these things and bring us also a report just to tell us how our systems, where are we? and look at all the sectors that gives us revenue, KPA and, and the rest, and ask ourselves to do that. With those few remarks, I beg to support Mr. Speaker. Very well, there's a heavy weight on this side, so I'll take two and then come this side. So the Honorable Wilvers, uh, Wilberforce Oundo. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. <clears throat> I stand to support the Division of Revenue Bill, Amendment Bill 2024, that has been stated by factors in which this House is a complicit in the author of our own misfortune. We ought not to have been here. We must have read the signs of time and made the necessary arrangement, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the Constitution of Kenya and Article 203 is explicitly clear on what needs to be considered in the allocation of funds between the two levels of government. And one of the, one of the two conditions I want to highlight, Honorable Speaker, is that the location should be in such a manner that allows the country governments to perform effectively and deliver services to the people of Kenya. Because the hallmark or the thrust of devolution was to enable services to be devolved adequately to the people of Kenya. The question we keep on asking and will continuously ask until somebody will have the, the courage to tell us so, is the amount give, being given to the current governments is it adequate, is it excessive, or is it inadequate? That's the question we need to ask. Has there been any form of, of costing of the services to ascertain how much does it cost to provide health care to a particular person? How much does it cost to provide water to a particular person? How much does it cost to provide water or other services to any particular person. If we continue to politicize the process as we have always done, always a grandstanding between the National Assembly and the Senate, we'll forever make decisions politically oriented without having a scientific approach to determining these particular services. And Honorable Speaker, we have always argued and we have always argued continuously, insistently and without flinching, that the cost of providing health care in Nairobi cannot be the same cost of providing health care in Seoport. They're completely different. Has there been any scientific approach to determine, or do we just do it for purpose of meeting the spirit and letter of the Constitution just for the political expedience? Honorable Speaker, and I want to challenge the Budget and Appropriation Committee. From where I sit, the public, I mean Parliamentary Budget Office is well resourced. The heads are fair and very educated people and experienced people. They can take this research or this uh, developer model even if the Commission of Revenue Allocation is only interested in allocating funds between the two count, uh, levels of government. Honorable Speaker, the other aspect that is very clear in the Constitution is the issue of physical discipline and effective use of resources. I wonder if there's any single time before we do ADORA, whether the committee, budget appropriation committee, ever calls for any report to indicate this is the situation, what we have, this is the amount we have given. Has it been effectively and efficiently used? Do we even, when we do the counter, uh, counter revenue allocation bill, do we ever punish any particular county that has been wasteful in the utilization of public funds, that has not allocated funds as required in the PFM Act between a recurrent expenditure and development expenditure, so that we, are, we, are, we punish those who, who fail to comply and reward those who comply, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, in the same vein, and uh, Beatrice Lachi has mentioned, uh, the county governments were never supposed to be cost centers where well, they are supposed to be as well as revenue generating centers. Where does the own source revenue go to, Honorable Speaker? For heaven's sake, why would Nairobi County require money from the Treasury? Why? The land in Nairobi alone, the land rates in Nairobi alone are enough to run the affairs of Nairobi without having to depend on the National Treasury. Are we able to ask those hard questions? Or are we so timid politically that we, are, we do not have the courage to ask these questions and get answers, Honorable Speaker? It is time that we get away from this minimalistic approach and this uh, approach that we simply have to do what the Constitution says. Are we able to question? 
Many of us, if you ask a typical ordinary Kenyan, any time he recognizes CDF more than count government projects. Why? Simp and the, considering the CDF is just a, a very paltry, it's a very small element of the money compared to the funds given to the counties. We must now, time has come, we must interrogate. And I want to ask the chair, Public Accounts Committee, yes, we'll be put under pressure. Orders will come from the, the house in the hill. You must comply. But have the courage to even have it in the report, your report, questioning, are we having value for money for the funds that we are locating to the county governments? Honorable Speaker, I see we are allocating 380 billion to the counties as equitable share, excluding conditional eh, share eh, of the revenue. And we are indicating, Honorable Speaker, that we are providing that when he calculates, it comes to 24.2 percent. Honorable Speaker, that's not true. And it's good to be very factual and realistic to the people of Kenya. We must be realistic. We have proposed the budget of 2024-2025 based on projected revenue. And the revenue is close something about 2.2 trillion. If you do a calculation, Honorable Speaker, it is not 24%. Let's be factual and realistic to the people of Kenya. Tell them the truth that we are, we are basically Order, doing 17. Wundo, the chair of budget, this one may require your listening because you may have to speak on it. Proceed. Chair, I know. A point of order? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. I didn't intend to interrupt my good friend, Dr. Udo, but I think for the sake of informing Kenyans without misleading them, Dr. Udo knows very well the, the sharing is on audited and approved reports. It's not on the projected revenue. I think it's important to go on record. Honorable Speaker, and for record purposes, Dr. Makali Mulu knows, and all of us knows, that they, uh, we already have audited accounts for 2022-2023 that have already been laid before this house. If the house is in, it takes inordinately long to review and approve, then you cannot really punish the counties. You cannot proceed to mislead the nation that we are giving them 24%, yet the truth of the matter is far much, much less than what is much, it's just closer, as the chair said, to the flow. We are not even anywhere above the flow. We are just, probably we have just put a carpet to increase the, the distance from the flow to where it is. So we need to be very clear, and this one we must be very clear. We must call upon the house. And this house is us order, to order, move order, with order, the speed. Did I hear another point of order? Yes. No, I go to the chair budget. Honorable chair, when we are in this house in such a day, there are Kenyans at home watching. And when they watch, they take what we say with a lot of weight. Because they think, rightly so, that we should be informed as we talk in this house. The Constitution is very clear that when it comes to equitable share, the basis is the last audited financial statements. There is no provision about what time the House should take in approving them. It talks about approved, not the submitted. And therefore, it is proper that we direct our debate in regards to what matters. What matters is approved. What does not matter is the submitted. So that even as Kenyans watch us, they can be able to be informed based on the reality and based on facts. And when it is based on facts, the last audited is 21-22, Honorable Speaker. And in that regard, we are apportioning to counties 24.4%, and that is the reality. I think that matter can rest there. You may now proceed, Honorable Wundo. 
So, Chair, let the matter rest there, but it's a point of debate, and I think the people of Kenya have heard me, and probably have to decide who, whom they want to, to believe or not. Honorable Speaker, as I conclude, Honorable Speaker, it is important as a country that we need to look at how we handle our things. Honorable Speaker, we appropriate each year. We appropriate funds each year. And as I stand here today, and this is based on unverified information, counties have not received close to 30 billion what was appropriated in the financial year 2023-2024. Again, misleading the nation that you have given them a certain percentage, yet the truth of the matter, you have not disbursed all the money. Honorable Speaker, for what purpose is it for us to make use unrealistic estimates, revenue projections, or simply decide to frustrate devolution by failing to release these bus funds on time? Honorable Speaker, for what benefit is it if you give development funds to the counties on 30th June? For what purpose? They can't absorb it, and the law is very clear of rollback. They can't absorb it. You create pending bills that are artificial or, or whatever it is. When the funds come, Honorable Speaker, on the last day, the guys in charge in the treasury, the counties, compete to loot the money. Compete to loot the money. Allocate whoever has not done anything. So at the end of the day, when the auditors go, what do they see? Funds were spent. There is no project that was ever undertaken. Or if it was undertaken, it was undertaken in such a manner, it adds no value to the people of Kenya. I just hope whoever will get the treasury, as the CS for treasury, and I'm praying for Honorable John Mbadi to get, I hope he will have the courage, he will be given the latitude, he will be given the responsibility, he will be given the freedom to, to instill some sanity in the rotten treasury. Honorable Speaker, those few remarks I support. The Honorable Joseph McClub. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. One, I rise to support the Division of Revenue Bill as presented by the Chair of Budget and Appropriation. So, Speaker, last week when we were contributing on the Appropriation Bill 2024, Supplementary 1, I said we, were, we are living in unique times. These unique times has come as a result of the people of Kenya exercising their legitimate concern through Article 1. The sovereign will of the people of Kenya lies on Article 1. When the people of Kenya decided that the finance bill be rejected, and the president agreed and this house agreed, it comes with consequences. And these consequences, Mr. Speaker, are supposed to be shared across board, across the two avenues on which the Kenyan taxpayers' money are channeled to, the county governments and the national governments. Whereas you've seen reduction for about 3.7 billion in this house, and Kenyans will see that members of parliament have not been able to travel to Mombasa, to hotels even around. We've been oscillating between the Bunga Towers, the Continental House, and the utilities within Parliament. That means Kenyans have seen that Parliament have complied. Kenyans have complied with the austerity measures as a result of the reduction or the rejection of the finance bill. Those are serious issues. So at the same level that the national government has faced reduction as in judiciary, Parliament, and the executive, even the county governments must fold the same reduction. And you can see, Mr. Speaker, 
that the reduction of 20 billion for the county governments, in this supplementary one that we passed in this house, Mr. Speaker, which is actually the main budget, you can see the figures of national government coming to 410. That 410 is a result of the money that was not able to be, uh, they, they were not able to get exchequer releases, the 30 billion that was supposed to go to county government. So if you say 380 plus 30, you will get 410. Many people will see it as if there is a, an increase, but it is not an increase. It is what was not able to be financed being brought forward so that if you add 380 plus 30, it becomes 410. Mr. Speaker, it tells you when we say revenue, division of revenue, and using audited and approved audit accounts of, of, of national revenue. What we should be asking as an house and what we should do is fast track the process of the Auditor General to fast track the process of audited accounts of national revenue and this house fast track the process of approval so that now instead of relying on 2020-2021 we should now be relying on 2022 or 2023-2024. So that means if we go in that particular direction then the amount of money that will go to the county governments and even the national governments will, re will rise as a result of using the latest revenue. But if you use the latest revenue five years down the line, you will get less money. So why is it that something that we need also to, to, to know and the country to know is that perhaps you have a budget, like the one that we have. You have a budget. At the end of the year, there is some money that is not able, national treasury is not able to release to the county governments. Why? Shortfall in revenue. We should tighten Kenya Revenue Authority so that if we target to raise, for example, 300 or 270 billion shillings, then we should be either there or above or nothing less so that we can get what, what is required. But as long as we collect less, then we shall have our budget in figures, but in reality the cash flow that goes to the county governments and the national government is less. Two, if we have a lot of litigation, on revenue raising measures, if there is a lot of litigation on, on bills or acts of parliament that are amended to raise more revenue, are undermined or rejected by the courts, then national treasury will not enough, have enough money to finance the budget. Hence, you will get shortfall in uh, national uh, exchequer releases and you will also, as a result, get what is called pending bills both in county governments, national government. And this is why we are saying it is time that we must also have a conversation with judiciary. Yes, they have the right to make decisions. But Mr. Speaker, I think as they condemn parliament for lack of participation, I think one of these days we shall also ask the judiciary to actually, before they make their rulings, pre take their rulings for public participation so that they, 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 they will be able to, feel, to know what is the feeling of Kenyans on this particular ruling. The uprising in Bangladesh is a result of court ruling. So sometimes the rulings that are done affect the citizens of this country. And it can be a source of our, an uprising in Kenya. So Mr. Speaker, like, like, like the one in Meru where a ruling is done that the, 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 uh, you reject it to take charge of, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Speaker, these are the consequences. So, one thing that Kenyans need to know from where we sit in this parliament is that the pending bills, the county government is not able to get all the money, the CDF is not able to get all the money at the end of the financial year because of one, the KRA is not able to raise all the money that is required as uh, or uh, approved raising measures to collect the money, and two, as a result of litigations that come across. So as a result, you carry, you carry another burden of the next financial year to the next financial year. And it will even be worse now that the courts have already pronounced themselves on 2023 finance bill. The chairman of budget should be preparing another supplementary budget, which is another main budget. You know supplementary one, Kenyans should know, it's not a supplementary, it's the main budget. And as a result of now negating 2023, 
we may resolve again in another reduction of the budget and as a result the budget committee will have again to prepare another supplement budget or we reintroduce finance bill either in piecemeal or as a whole so that the country can survive these are the reality that is facing the country but speaker uh, sorry, sorry mr speaker if you look at audited accounts of 2022-2020-2021, the approved, the audited and approved is about 1.5 uh, trillion. Mr. Speaker, what about if we could have used it 2023-2024? At least the county governments could have gotten more money, everybody else could have gotten more money. But the reality is, even if we do this and we don't get and raise enough as anticipated in the revenue raising measures, Mr. So Speaker, we shall only have a budget in figures, but in reality, we don't have money to run the country. So what do we do as in this time, Mr. Speaker? It is a time that the people of Kenya have already expressed themselves through GNC and other authorities. It is time that we must be able to learn to live within our means. I am very sure the influence in the county governments. If county governments were to live within their means and cost their programs, the, the, the functions of the county governments, if costed, how much will it cost and how will it develop the country? So, Speaker, when we review this constitution, I am part of the stakeholders of this country that went for the constitutional review 2010. We wanted county governments to create wealth, not become a source of eating areas. We want the county governments to create industries. How do you develop this country, Mr. Speaker? Two things. We increase in our agricultural production. And two, resuscitate our industry so that we build the industrial revolution in Kenya and then grow the agricultural revolution. Those are two things that can improve Kenya and build the economy of Kenya. I will ask you for time, Mr. Speaker, because I have, I have something to share. Mr. Speaker, so this reality that we are facing, Mr. Speaker, is that very soon we may ask the government, county governments, whatever you raise, and even and even county governments that have, that have actually been converted to cities, it is time that this house must have a conversation. If you have converted yourself to a city, you can as well run autonomously using your own revenue, like Nairobi, like Mombasa, and those others now can be able to survive. But again, that has... Very well, good... No, no, order, Honorable McClap. Good speak, but there are strong minds also on the list here. Honorable Karoli Omondi, you may proceed. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I will, be, I will try to be brief so that our other colleagues may have a bite at the sherry. Uh, let me begin by saying that I think it is time that we relooked at our budget making process. I think. What the courts have told us consistently for the last 24 months is that we have got it wrong. And I think it is time, as a country and as a parliament, we really look at this and figure out how can we rework the legislative framework for budget making in this country so that we don't suffer the continuous embarrassment of having our finance bills declared unconstitutional twice successively. I think it is quite an indictment on parliament as well as uh, other arms of government. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I agree with the concept that both benefit and burden should be shared proportionately as a concept. But when I look at what is being presented here, uh, several issues trouble my mind. One, I see that we are still using the projections contained in the financial year, uh, the, the Finance Act of 2024-2025, which, as we all know, is dead and buried. Yet, we are basing the 15% calculation, or, or rather the projections, on that. that. That worries me. If you look at the way all these things are designed, the counties are actually operating uh, on the last audited accounts of revenues received and approved by this House that are 24 months behind, I think, 2021-2022. Uh, Yet the national government is operating on actuals that are current. So that in itself does not create equity and proportionality 
when you are sharing the revenues. Secondly, if you look at the way we are proposing that the revenues will be shared and money distributed, how can a county government plan? I think we were a bit quick uh, uh, on, uh, to dismiss what Honorable Oundo was saying, but if you think about it, 15% eh, uh, is on most recent. In fact, the constitutions, for some reason, didn't say last audited. It said most recent. Most recent could be even five years. It, it simply means the last audited and the last approved by parliament. Yeah, it could be any, 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 any audited accounts. Yeah, and if five years ago you were raising 1.7 trillion and last year you raised 2.6 or 2.3 like we did last year and you're basing your 15% on five years ago, you can see the injustice that is being done to the counties. And I'm wondering whether it would be so difficult for the economists and the finance experts in this house to advise us how to share both the 15%, which we have no option about, because that 15% vests as a constitutional provision. So if it is calculated, we have no power to reduce it. We have to avail it to the county government. But what Honorable Hundo was trying to say was that there's a portion which is based on projections, like what we have now. Now, for that, yes, there should be some equitable share if there's a shortfall. Yeah. But if the monies are never released to the counties on time and in the amounts that are envisaged. How can they plan for their development? I think there's a very fundamental question here that we need to discuss and see whether or not it is time to review both the provisions of Article 2 or 3 of the Constitution as well as the framework that we have for budget making, especially as they relate to revenue sharing, division of revenue, and disbursement of funds to the counties. Because if this continues, I can assure you, have a very quick look at the current proposals in this particular bill, I, I, I can guarantee there'll be litigation. And going by recent precedent, we don't know how that will go. And, and my, my suggestion would be that this House sits down and relooks re at the entire budget-making framework, and we get it right. I think we have good economists, we have good lawyers, we have good uh, finance experts. We have good public uh, sector experts. We need to relook at this process. Otherwise, we will keep going round in circles and never delivering on the promise of devolution. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Joseph Oyula is in the house. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker for giving me this chance to also add my voice to this uh, uh, division of, uh, division of uh, 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 revenue amendment bill 2024. Mr. Speaker, this has come about because of the unfortunate situation we went through in the finance bill. Once the finance bill was rejected, that means that the revenue was going to drop by a certain margin. So the division of revenue, which had already been done, automatically was also to be affected. And that is why this uh, uh, proposed reduction has been brought before this House. Mr. Speaker, uh, let's accept that this is a, a good work that has been done by the budget committee because we cannot pretend that that revenue will be uh, uh, collected. It's one th thing saying that we have revenue in the book, but the actual money may not come. So if you foresee that there will be no actual funds coming to the exchequer, then you definitely have to revise your budget accordingly. It is important to live within our means, and that's why this exercise is important both to the country and to the, this House. Mr. Speaker, the, the arithmetic that has been done is also good. The Budget Committee has worked very hard to make sure 
that they reduce any complaints from uh, any source. Mr. Speaker, this uh, proposed division has reduced or as adjusted by the Budget Committee uh, should be supported. And the county government should be asked, county government has enough sources of revenue. If they miss it from the exchequer, they should be able to raise more than enough from their local generate, locally generated revenue. It's only unfortunate that most county governments do not realize the importance of collecting revenue locally. They want to depend on what they get from the national government. Yet, if you compare the revenue they used to, to raise in the past during county councils, uh, it was much more than what they are raising now. That's what they should be look at. They should be looking at to make sure that they do much better than the former local authority used to do. Hmm? The sources of revenue are misdirected. Revenue is collected and banked in other accounts instead of going to the exchequer. So they should accept whatever decision comes from this house. Whatever reduction is proposed has been looked at very carefully eh, by the budget committee. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we need to accept this and uh, approve this Division of Revenue uh, Amendment Bill 2024. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to support. Uh, the Honorable Jafet Nakundi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also want to support these amendments on the Division of Revenue Bill. This has come because of the hostility measures that we are undergoing as a country, and we know this has also come because of the rejection of the Finance Bill 2024. Initially, we had passed money that was supposed to go to the counties up to a tune of 400 Point 0.1 billion, and I was lucky to be among those who sat in the mediation committee between the National Assembly and the Senate. We spent a lot of time to deliberate on this issue, and we increased the money going to the counties by approximately 15 billion. That notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, sir, we are here again to reduce the amount going to the counties to a tune of almost 20 billion. This, Mr. Speaker, is not because we do not support devolution. It is because of what we are undergoing as a country. We support devolution because in one way or another, devolution has been able to work. Devolution has changed the lives of many. In some places, devolution has created employment opportunities and so many other things. But to me, difficult times call for difficult measures. And the difficult measure that we have to, to undergo is to reduce the amount of uh, revenue that we are supposed, the amount that is going to counties. But we call upon the county governments to make sure that they enhance their systems so that they can be able to collect more in terms of revenue. Because I think and believe that the county government have not been able to use their mechanisms so that they can be able to collect more in their own source revenue. Lastly, as I speak, Mr. Speaker, as I support Mr. Speaker, we call upon the county government. The money that goes to the county government should be used in a proper manner because 
Most of these monies that are going to the county government, most of the roads, we are not seeing them being done. Most of the roads that we are seeing done are roads that are being done by Kera. Most of the ECD classes, you cannot even see these ECD classes compared to the money that we get as NGCDF is just a is just a drop in the ocean. But you can see the projects that are being done by by NGCDF all over the entire country. Projects that are being done by NGCDF are well are, are well seen, and people can see them. They are being done in a well and a proper manner compared to what we see in the county government. We know this money was to enhance the CHPs. This money was to go into building the hospitals, level one, level two, dispensaries, and level three hospitals. But we believe that the money that we are going to give them, they should reduce on the travel of MCS, they should reduce on the travel of employees, they should cut costs. The way the national government, from the judiciary, the executive, and parliament, have cut their budgets, they should also go back to the county, to the, to the county governments, and the MCS should reduce their expenditure, the ones they had intended to use this financial year so that they are able to absorb what we are able to give them. And I call upon Mr. Speaker, the, the Treasury, to be able to, re, to release the money in time so that these projects can be able to be implemented. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I want to support the amendments on the Division of Revenue Bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable James Nicol. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I rise to actually support the Division of Revenue Bill, which has come as a, as a result of the circumstances we have just gone through. Mr. Speaker, it then gives us the opportunity to reflect on how we do our things, how to respond to the needs and the feelings of our people so that next time we do not get ourselves into these circumstances. What we went through was not a surprise at all. It came along, we looked at it, we were told, but we went our own way, as if we elect ourselves to this house. Mr. Mr. Speaker, but this is justifiable, that having happened, we have to raise to reduce the funds that we can give out. And in this case, to the counties, reduction is going to be about 20 billion. It's, it's, it's unavoidable at this time. But Mr. Speaker, it may also uh, lead us to think that traditionally we, we do the budget, then we raise the money. Maybe we should start thinking, could we probably raise the money and see the uh, money we can raise and then do the budget. Uh, that is just a thought. But whatever it is, the shortfall must be addressed. So, Mika, I'll only raise uh, a few things. The chair of budget raised an issue of when we have a shortfall or when you have a surplus, what should we do? Logic dictates that actually, if there is a, if there's a, a shortfall, it should actually be shared proportionately. Or if there's a surplus, it should be shared proportionately. However, Mr. Speaker, that should be under the assumption that all the money that we put in the books actually get released to the counties. Because right now, counties can tell you there are a lot of funds that they have not released that they expected. So if you're going to think of sharing the surplus and sharing the shortfall, we must also think, do we appropriately and adequately release the funds? So, Speaker, whenever we discuss the division of revenue bill, although this is just a revision, 
it always makes me think of have we looked at our devolution uh, in detail? It's now over 10 years, but you still see issues that to some extent are linked to uh, the structures of the devolution that we should have overcome by now. So, Speaker, if you look at the functions up to today, we are still talking of do we know what it cost to run the functions at the county. We had a transition authority that actually failed to do its job. Again, because of structure, the transition authority was actually uh, placed in a ministry. Its counterpart, or uh, that was administrative, but if you look at the uh, legal aspect, which was the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution, that was a body, and actually all the laws were looked at. So that is something we should look at. It didn't happen, but I think it is something that we should now do. It has been talked about long enough. The other person, uh, the other aspect of devolution that comes to mind is the functions. Uh, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> if you look at the functions generally, Policies and standards are a function of the national government, while a lot of services are functions of the county governments. But you still have a lot of funds that actually remain at the national level, and you'd have thought that policies would take less money. That is because the, the, devolu the devolution of functions are really not complete in my mind. If you look at health, for example, still a lot of functions that actually could be in the counties are uh, with the national government. So that you find at the national level what is happening, whether it is health, whether it is water, whether it is agriculture, whether it is early childhood education, what the, what the county government does is actually not links to the policies that are actually done by the national government, which also just concerns itself with, with delivery, uh, not just in the, the, the functions that are national, like education, security. But if you look at it carefully, it actually doubles into what would have been done at the county. And yet, the issue of policy and standards actually remains uh, unaddressed because the national government is not doing that. The other issue that we probably look at is the budget process. If you look at it, by the time we're doing the budget policy statement, which is what gives up to the Division of Revenue Bill, you actually find that the National Assembly, which deals with that, knows very little of what the needs of the counties are. And every time we have actually had uh, to, to go into uh, negotiations. And every time they come from there, you say, ah, now we understood what the county needs. It should not be at that time when we have disagreed that we are now understanding. And I've always thought that probably if IBEC took this matter seriously together with the, the Commission of Revenue Allocation, by the time we are going, the needs of the county should actually be compiled and should even be available to the National Assembly to look through and definitely to the Senate so that you don't have a situation like even now when we are saying we have given above the constitutional requirement of 25 of 20, of 15 percent, you find that 75 percent of the money is still with, uh, with the, 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 the national government. So, Mr. Speaker, I think these are issues we should look at we really need to look at what does IBEC do, what does the Commission of Revenue Allocation do, the information they have, how does it feed into the discussion during the division of, of revenue. And finally, Mr. Speaker, we also should now, as all the members have said, look seriously on the local revenue to be raised by the, the counties. I know they deal with it locally, but even when you, with the national government, by the time we are actually doing sharing. We know very clearly what they are going to raise us A in A. On the other hand, we have no idea what 
the counties are going to raise. So again, in that area, we are actually in the dark. So I think we should look at all this in our, in our devolution. Maybe it is some time to look at, somebody to look at the constitution again, particularly in relating to resources, so that we actually tidy that uh, uh, up together. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I do support this bill. Very well, the Honorable Julia Smelly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the Division of Revenue Bill. This is a very important bill, Mr. Speaker, that actually uh, appropriates revenue across all levels of government as per the Constitution. The Constitution is very clear, Honorable Speaker, on how revenue is supposed to be shared amongst the two levels of government. And on top of that, also on uh, what we are, on what we call the equitable share. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the, the Chair, Budget and Appropriation Committee and the members, having actually sat down at this particular time to really come up with supplementary one. Supplementary one is essentially the appropriation, the appropriation bill that we lost as a result of the, the cancellation of the Finance Bill 2024-2025. Honorable Speaker, the Chair Budget and the Budget Committee members actually have gone through to ensure that what was actually dropped, or was occasioned by the dropping of the Finance Bill, is actually legalized through this Appropriation Bill. And in effect, they even went down to ensure that the laws or the Constitution is followed, that what we are sharing with counties is what we have. Two, they even went to look into non-core areas that are not essential. That is why non-core areas have actually been cut down in this particular budget. Honorable Speaker, and I want to loud what the other honorable members have just said, that this appropriation bill is a bill that comes at a time, is, is, is a bill that... <coughs> tries to put in place how this house can now live within our means, cut expenditures within the, 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 the county governments, look at areas within the national government, that is the legislature, issues of non-essential travels, non-essential uh, expenditures, even within the judiciary, even within the executive. It is in this bill that I have seen the presidency has lost a lot, even in the as part of uh, uh, this uh, part of the bill. But one thing I want to ask the, the, the chair budget and the budget committee to really look at how best can we incentivize other areas of the economy so that we can still raise more revenue even without increasing taxes. We are very as where we can actually talk about and really make sure that as we move forward, we need to ask the, 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 the KRA to really tell us which areas can we actually look into. What can we do to those large uh, revenue uh, raising areas, those large taxpayers, so that we can expand the base so that we can make sure that as much as we, we have not raised taxes the way the Kenyans said, we have been able to incentivize some of the companies, some of the large uh, taxpayers, to make sure that we raise more revenue. County governments need to also go, to go the same direction, Honorable Speaker, especially in reducing expenditure on unco areas. Issues of travels, issues of... Uh, which are not essential, and make sure that the small businesses, the small SMEs, are actually made to grow across counties. Large counties that can be able to raise revenue, like uh, Eldoret Town, was, uh, Kisumu, Mombasa, Nairobi, those county governments need to sit down and look on how best businesses can grow in those towns, and therefore raise their own revenue, apart from relying on the national government. Honorable Speaker, 
as it was rightly put by the chair of the budget committee, this division of revenue relies on the last audited accounts. And I want to commend them because as we speak, as per the last audited accounts, they have managed to give 24%. And I think Honda uh, Makali Mulu, who is an authority in this field, has actually said the same, that as much as we are looking at the last audited accounts, we also need to go back and evaluate on the performances of all the remittances that we gave to counties and national government as part of auditing to know which areas are going to yield more in terms of investment. And I want to go specifically to the issues that is affecting maybe the education sector and even other sectors that are actually very important for this country. As much as education is a service provider, it is very essential to have a well-educated uh, civil service, a well-educated population. It will even be very easy to interpret government policies. It will even be very easy to understand government programs. And when the government is implementing a particular program, when they are very educated, then it will not be difficult to even run government programs and policies, even down in the rural areas. Even the implementing officers, like the chiefs, like the county government officials, the ward reps, and everyone else. So by investing in these sectors, we are actually doing ourselves a great service. But the other issue that I really want us to really look as a house is that as much as we give a lot of money to county governments, how effective is that particular money used? And what is the effect of the money sent to counties vis-a-vis -vis other forms of funding? Honorable Speaker, we have the Constitutional Development Fund. It's a very small fund. And I want to ask the Budget and Appropriation Committee and even the, the Ministry of Planning and National Development to look at the impact of each and every uh, coin that is sent down. County governments have been in existence for around 10 years. It is time we review them and look at how effective are the funds we are giving them so that we can spur development, we can spur growth, so that we can actually grow the economy. We cannot continuously rely on the national government, Mr. Speaker, to only be the only source of raising revenue. It will reach a time where what the national government raises is cannot be able to run both the, the 47 governments in counties and the national government uh, uh, entity. Two, let's also look at every uh, function that has been devolved. We really cost it. So that when we are actually saying we are sending money for drugs to counties, for, for health, are we sending the adequate amount of money? So that we have ma drugs in those hospitals. We have enough money for roads. We have enough money for, 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 for water and the likes. And if those monies are not enough, how effic efficient and effective is the county government structure in making sure that this money is remitted and they are effective on, on the ground? I have gone across the, the county sub, uh, constituency in this country, and you realize, Mr. Speaker, that the constituency development fund is, can easily be seen in terms of schools development, in terms of infrastructure on, uh, uh, on uh, what the, the constituency fund has been mandated to do, even the construction of police stations, even the, the construction of uh, roads, because CARA, though it is not a function of, uh, of the NGCDF, is actually sent through the constituency roads committee. So in effect, what I'm trying to say, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that it is important that let's make the county government lean. Let's make it more effective. Let's make it to make sure that it is not, all the money is not lost in bureaucracy. It is not lost in paying salaries. It is not lost in running errands. But let more than 40% of the funds reach the common man. And it will, shall be seen in services. It shall be seen in all manner of uh, uh, work that is done. Lastly, it is on uh, the issue of equalization funds, or what we call uh, the revenue that we, we send to to, 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 to counties through the Division of Revenue Bill. I want these monies to actually be sent on time. And I want to ask the National Treasury, as much as we are budgeting what we have, 
let's make sure that any funds that we, we are supposed to transmit to counties be taken there on time so that the, 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 the Wananchi have a feel that good work is done. With that, I support Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Nyango Oyo. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the consideration. Mr. Speaker, from the onset, I want to support the bill of amendment bill of division revenue, which has been uh, very well and ably conversed and, and uh, articulated by the very able chairman of the Budget and Appropriation Committee, Honorable Dindi Nyoro, in this house. Honorable Speaker, I want to support by saying that uh, we are very happy that the government has done all to make sure that uh, uh, changes are made uh, to meet, to enable it to uh, meet the aspiration of our budget, which uh, move that has necessitated various cut in various essential services. Honorable Speaker, my main reason for supporting this is the government needs to do service to the, its citizenry. <coughs> so far, the government is on, on course, and uh, the several programs are taking place, but I'm afraid that many programs are going to be affected by the various cuts. I'm afraid that uh, while the committee or the government through the budgetary committee has made remarkable cuts in various essential services, the services by the government, ministry and local government do not show, do not prove that we are in a delicate position. The problems that Kenyans have or we have against Gen Z is perception. We are cutting the budget in order to enable us meet certain aspirations. And I'm happy that we have made a lot of sacrifices, including my parliament, including the CDF has had to lose a certain big portion of uh, what the allocation they had. But because judgment to a lot of extent in leadership and politics is through perception, the government through the local, uh, the local government and uh, the national government has not demonstrated that we are in dangerous zone, that economy is awkward, it's not supporting our aspiration. Mr. Speaker, the county governments used to be standalone governments. They were collecting revenue, they were executing various public aspirations. They were building schools, they were building hospitals, they were doing the roads. Nairobi County was a government on its own, standalone government. And they were doing a lot of services to meet the aspirations of the residents of Nairobi. Kisumu the same, Eldoret the same, and many others. But since the devolution, the work of the county government, all the revenues that are collected by these county governments have not disappeared, they have sublimed. And what they are doing is all the times uh, making noise about the release of, of uh, the government, uh, of the checker from, from the government quarter. And there's no demonstration on the ground that even after they have collected, or even after the government has released their part of, of, of the bill, that they are doing something for the people. All that you see that embitter the local people is the flamboyance of the political class in the county government. You see the governors being driven, chauffeur driven in many vehicles with many people with titles that don't matter, don't, we don't need at this point in time. And this must be corrected. There are rumors of those top people in the government looting lots of money and them, there, are, there are indications you can be shown, even in Dubai or even in Kenya, serious developments that belong to the top leadership of the county government. And I'm wondering whether this body called ESCC was quietly disbanded or somebody has asked them to go for break until the day that he will be recalled. And as if that is not enough, you come to the national government. The president dissolved the cabinet because they were not performing. And the cabinet were not performing alone. There is a ministry which is run by a technical person called principal secretary. Then there is the image of the government, the cabinet secretary. I'm sorry that we are soon going to pass to this house the various uh, appointees to various cabinet secretaries. The offices they are going to, comp to, to occupy were fabulously done the other day. But once they, are, they have been approved by this house, you go and check the offices they are going to take, what fabulous developers are going to be done, as if they have never been done before. And as if that is not enough, 
Look at the cabinet secretary when he, he has left his office and is going home. The escort routine that he has. Fuel gaslers that are taking money. Security officers who are supposed to be guarding the security Kenyans' uh, uh, travel points. They are all there. And once, since they were dissolved, I've not had any incident where a cabinet secretary who used to be escorted by two vehicles has been hijacked or has been harassed. This, stop, this must stop. The government must demonstrate that we are serious. I will demonstrate to you my experience of yesterday. Our principal secretary, in a controversial agriculture ministry, he, so you, Dr. Paul Rohn, who was mentioned with Linturi in the, in, in, the, in the fertilizer scandal. And I'm happy that in his wisdom, the president has already done away with the honorable Linturi, and I believe this one should also be left. He was visiting, purportedly visiting my, my constituency, the sugar belt, which we co-own with my colleague Meli yesterday. And he said it was technical reasons. While I believe the principal secretary is not involved in politics, he came in full gas last the undersecretaries, the directors, and came to the constituency. And everything came to a standstill. Work was not going on. Farmers were called to a corner. They waited between nine and six when he saw them for only 10 minutes. And he had no value addition to his visit. But the, the, the type of the money that was spent, and he expected us leaders to, wait, to take time and go and receive him, because me and Meli, we had received intelligence that was coming at the BS of a local sugar company, which is entangled with the public with land fraud. So we could not waste time to go and receive him. And, and, and you, the kind of flamboyance, the kind of ex expenditure that you find public officer uh, spending, giving, uh, the image is giving to the people. That is what is giving the government and, and, and our, 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 our political parties bad image. We want to cut the meat where it hurts. And where it hurts, we have already sacrificed. Even Parliament, we have sacrificed ours. Everywhere has been. But the government needs to be very serious. Our organs like ESCC need to be very serious and spare nobody. The government appointees must behave and stop this excessive flamboyance and behave as if we are, in, we are going through a sterility uh, period. And I believe that uh, while we will support this bill, we want the, His Excellency to be very tough and very strict, maintain a lean government, and put proper measures for making sure that there's no further wastage in the government, and more so by the appointees. Thank you very much. I support. Is the Honorable John Waidaka Kiambu in the house? <clears throat> Give Honorable Waidaka the mic. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, uh, <clears throat> for giving me this time to uh, voice my support to support the, the Division of Revenue Amendment Bill, number 38 of 2024. And uh, before I start, I would like to <clears throat> commend uh, the Chairman of Budget for doing a very commendable job under very, very difficult circumstances. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> the Kenya, uh, <clears throat> Kenyans uh, rejected uh, the, the 2024 uh, finance bill. And for this reason, the government is in a very difficult situation. And Mr. Speaker, this means that both the national government and county governments must share the burden of reduction of revenue as required by Article 218 of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, Article 209 and 210 of our Constitution gives county governments authority to collect revenue. It's therefore, Mr. Speaker, for county governments to understand the situation in the country and put proper measures to raise own revenues. 
so that services like healthcare and other services that are provided by the county government will not come to a stop. Mr. Speaker, in the year 2023, 2022-2023, <clears throat> county governments fell well short of their revenue collecting targets. For example, Mr. Speaker, in Nairobi, out of our projected Out of our projected 17.5 billion in revenue collection, Nairobi County was only able to raise 10.2 billion. In Mombasa, out of a target of 5 billion, Mombasa was only able to raise 3.9 billion. In Kiambu, where I come from, out of a target of 3.4 billion, they were able to raise 2.4 billion. In Narok, 4.2 billion was the target, only 3.1 was raised. And in Nakuru, out of a target of 2.3, only 1.6 was raised. As you can see, Mr. Speaker, the county governments are falling way short of their projected targets. So from this, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would urge the county governments to come up with clear policies where they'll be able to raise money by themselves to embrace technology and have better systems that will assist them in collecting revenue. Mr. Speaker, I'm told of a story by my late father, or rather I was told a story by my late father, whereby the Nairobi County used to loan, in the 60s, used to loan other governments, foreign governments money because of the efficiency of how they used to collect money. One of the problems that faces our, our county governments, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> is they do not know where their tax collectors are or, or people who are supposed to pay taxes. For example, Mr. Speaker, I have brought up a bill that was approved by the, the budget committee to have an address system in the country whereby the county government would know where all the taxpayers are as per using an address system to identify all the necessary people who are supposed to pay tax. So Mr. Speaker, I support this bill so that we are able to address, uh, mitigate this issue whereby because now that the government does not have enough money, also county governments will also have to reduce their allocation or their allocation will be reduced so that we'll have an equitable uh, solution to our problem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you very much for using uh, fewer minutes. I want to ask future speakers to do the same because it has also most of the things have been ventilated. Let's have the Honorable Esther Passari speak on this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to uh, the revision of uh, uh, Division of Revenue Sharing. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I commend the Committee of Budget for doing all the work that they've done. And, uh, you know, we've all been mentioning, or oh, we've had some unprecedented uh, um, uh, historical issues that have happened in our country with the Gen Z protests um, and you know it's taken us to this, it's brought us to this point where we have to come back and look at our revenue based on the fact that we will not be having the finance bill 2024 um, but I want to take this opportunity to mention a few of the people that lost their lives um, during this protest there was Rex Masai Evans Kiratu, Eric Shiani, David Chege, Bisley Kamau, Ibrahim Kamau, Kennedy Onyango, Abdi Kadir, Charles Ngere, Ikebath Mukei. These are just 10 names of the people that lost their lives. Lest we forget that the reason that we are talking about this today is because the country reached a point where our children rose up and said, enough is enough. And why did they say enough is enough? It's because they can see that the country was not going in the right direction. We as representatives of the people failed to actually do the job that we were elected to do. All three arms of government failed the people of Kenya. And because we failed the people of Kenya, we're here discussing the budget. Now, the budget that we have, we have to ask ourselves some really hard questions. Questions because I can see, I, I recently saw the strike notices coming out left, right, and center. Everybody wants 
collective bargaining agreements that were agreed, honored. People want jobs that were promised uh, um, people hired. Uh, we have shortages of teachers. We have shortages of medics. We have, uh, we have uh, people who are ret uh, past retirement age still in government. We have to really start cleaning up. And cleaning up, if we can't do it ourselves, what we had with the Gen Z revolution uh, or protest recently was like a tremor. The earthquake is what we should avoid. And we can avoid it if we actually listen. Listen and act on everything that they're saying. Because you know what? These are not strangers coming to tell us how to run our country. These are not strangers telling us that there's a lot of waste. These are not strangers telling us there's a lot of theft and a lot of corruption. These are our children. These are Kenyans. These are people that the Constitution swore to protect. But then when I come to think about it, I also feel sometimes that maybe we need to really sit down and revisit this Constitution. You know, do we really need 47 counties? Do, did we actually start this, um, this exorbitant expenditure when we passed our Constitution, where we decided to have so many counties? I mean, I was trying to draw a parallel with California. California has um, got the population of Kenya and has 150 elected representatives versus our 2,000. California has a GDP of probably the entire con continent of Africa. And here in, in, in Kenya, we right now, when we think about it, we are, I think, overrepresented. California has CEOs running the various um, state um, uh, boroughs that they have within their, within their, uh, their state. So I think we really need to look at, and we need to do it quickly, we need to look at, one, are our laws adequate when it comes to fighting corruption? Because the former president said we're losing $2 billion a, a day, which comes to about $700 billion. We definitely need money to be able to get this country right. And if we actually deal with corruption, we should be able to do this. But are we putting money into dealing with corruption? Are we putting the legislation and the structures in place to deal with corruption? Because if we are not, then we're going to have a problem. I saw some, um, some uh, videos uh, running around on social media after we did the vetting. And so many people questioning the wealth of many of the people that we're vetting. I too wonder, how do people make that kind of money? Because I've had businesses that have collapsed, businesses that have done well, and I don't have that kind of wealth. And I don't want that kind of wealth. Because at the end of the day, it's ridiculous for one person to be worth so much, and the only job that they've ever had is a public servant. Um, you know, I think it, it actually, it's, it's like egg on the face of the people that have elected us to do the work. When we look at the basic, sh uh, the sharing of, um, of uh, the monies that we give to the, count, uh, to the counties, we have the basic share of 20%, population 18%, health at 17%, poverty levels at 14 agriculture at 10 roads at 8 lands at 8 and urban at 5 I have a feeling that when we come up with 7.8 uh, in equalization, are we asking ourselves whether the money we've already given them is actually had an impact on poverty alleviation? Devolution was supposed to sort that. Some of the counties that are so poor that children are still studying under the trees have been given billions of shillings since we started with devolution. So we obviously have a problem, and yet the governors that have left those, uh, those counties are billionaires today, shamefully. So I feel that while we're looking at the revenue sharing, while we're looking at the monies at the at the various, uh, on, uh, to all the government and the three arms of government, I think the most important thing that we have to look at is um, pending bills. I mean, we should have, as a government and counties, you know, we've actually impoverished a lot of Kenyans. We've taken services from Kenyans and we've not paid them. And we're not even providing. We keep having committee after committee. And these are Kenyans who've actually employed people, borrowed money from banks that have actually now, and are, some of them are committing suicide, some of them are actually having serious mental health issues. We have to be a country that cares. And for us to be a country that cares, we actually have to have a holistic approach. So I really pray and hope that somehow the three arms of government will sit down together and actually have 
a conversation about where we went wrong, what are we doing right, and then directing us to ensure that we do right. I know we want to 